Hey there, spooky friends, and welcome to another episode of the Scarish Podcast. Woo. I'm Robin Grace. This is Adam Diaz. Hello. And today we are back, this time with a uh, topic from Adam, right? Indeed. Tag uh, team, back again. <laughs> Check it to wreck it. Let's begin. If you're new here, we are a podcast that covers random, uh, scarish topics, whether that's true crime, you know, haunted things, aliens, cryptids, things like that. Supernatural shit um, sometimes. Sometimes real life scary shit. <laughs> Depends on what we're feeling that day. <laughs> Sometimes, at least lately, all I'm the feeling is real life scary shit. Sometimes I do natural disasters. And if we're getting ready to go on a trip, for some reason I cover airplane I crashes. I don't know why he does. Uh, anyway, um, let's get into it. Yeah, no, no. Let's just talk a little bit. I mean, Charles Leclerc won Monaco. Oh I figured you were going to bring that up before we yes. got started. Yes, this past week we had the Monaco GP. We, I, as, we in, as in like yeah, as if we I watched went there. it on TV. Um, Thank you. But yes, Charles, the Prince of Monaco, not literally the Prince of Monaco, but uh, the only Monegas driver on the grid won in Monaco. So it's like hometown hero. It's pretty cool. It was really. Did you know Monaco is the second smallest country in the world? Yes, babe. I'm the one that told you that. I know. It's a fascinating <laughs> fact. I'm glad I didn't um, steal it from you. Very boring race, but very cool outcome. So, you know, a mix of uh, both worlds, I guess. Huge crash in the beginning. Sorry, Checo. Also, Indy 500 was this past weekend. Mm-hmm. This isn't a motorsports podcast. This is just... Yet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I felt really bad for Pato. I wanted to cry because he didn't win. He passed, um, just so you know, because obviously everyone doesn't overlap. This man she refers to passed to take the lead on the final lap of the Indy 500 and was passed to lose the, the lead last corner. in the last corner of that last yeah. lap of the Indy 500 and came in second instead. Um, but, yeah, lots of racing this past week. We also uh, started watching a new show. Uh, I think you already finished with it. What's it called? Oh, Maxton Hall. <laughs> Maxton Hall. It's a dub <laughs> of a German show. Yeah, I think it's a German show. Um, it's really good. You know, young adult romance. Cute. Uh, I said it was like Fifty Shades without as much money and not not nearly as much sex. There's no, it's a young adult show. So there's like none of that at all. Um, it's just the whole like, oh my god, he's filthy rich and he's kind of a piece of shit, but I can fix him premise, which is what reminded me of Fifty Shades. Ah. So, anyways, yeah, so that's been going on. Um, <laughs> not the major in my life. I just restarted watching The Bear for just for fun on Hulu. Uh, hope everyone I enjoy the show. So. Hope everyone had a great Memorial Day. It was a, a Memorial Day weekend. Yep. So uh, holiday for a lot of people. Uh, yeah, everyone's back to work. Uh, sadly, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we can get started now. <laughs> I mean, unless I'm there's just, anything else you want I, to bring up. I am looking at Adam's screen right now, and it's just a huge <laughs> blow-up hot dog with a face I on I do it. this thing where before we record, I have two monitors. One monitor has the recording software and my script, and the other monitor has whatever I was watching when I was working on my script. So it's The Bear, Season 1, Episode 4, and it's uh, got 28 minutes and 38 seconds left. So if you want to freeze frame and see what like Robin has to stare at the entire time I do this topic, it's a giant blow-up hot dog with a smiley face, and it looks fucking awesome. But yeah, that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started, if you don't mind. Go for it. I All don't right. mind. So uh, I'm waiting. That's what I'm here for. This week, it's an Adam episode, y'all. That's right. We're doing a single topic episode. So Robin goes one week, then I go the next week, and we go back and forth, and it's an Adam week... <laughs> Oh my god, you actually... (laughs) Woo! Thanks, I hate it. (laughs) Let's do this thing. Robin was reading my script and it said in parentheses, air horn. And I had it on my fucking phone. Anywho, maybe I'll splice in a song like this, like right now. Like, oh, me so horny. I just want to know a counter of like the first five, ten minutes of the show and how many like f bombs or or how many times you use shit and stuff like that in the first ten minutes. Why? It's just got to be a lot, No, this episode. No, there's no way. I haven't sworn that much because I haven't talked that much. You're talking about F1 for like 20 minutes. Am I right, folks? Am I right, ladies? I need to edit in another air horn. Damn it. So, anywho, uh, it is an Adam episode. That means anything goes, as we all know. Fucking chaos. Uh, We're going to be spending the next 30 minutes covering my breakdown of my favorite Zelda titles ever. Uh, and then we'll have a commercial break. What? And then the next 30 minutes, we're going to cover my idea for a rearranged timeline for the Zelda series. He's not even joking when he talks about how much he would love to talk about Zelda. I, I wrote that as a joke, and I put just Keating, and I said, but damn, I'd love to make that for you, too. So exactly, zero people could watch it. 
I could, though. I could literally talk for an hour about Zelda right now. I won't, because I respect you, and I respect your time. So, There's going to be someone out there. There's going to be the one person who listens to our show out there who's like, Adam, why haven't you made this video yet? No one cares. I mean, I've watched so many Zelda videos just for funsies, covering the same stuff, because I just want to hear different people's point of views all over YouTube. So, that's me. But, uh, you know what? Why don't we just talk? We never do that anymore. Remember when we used to talk about things that divided people? Like how we brush our teeth? Like water, toothpaste, water, then brush? And I think you go water, toothpaste, then you don't do water again on the toothpaste, which is just fucking crazy to me. <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. Like, or when we did paper clips versus staples? Like, I still you know, very adamantly say paper clips are the way to go. I stapled something today that I shouldn't have stapled. So, I don't know. At work, it's mostly paper clips. You know what it prevented that? Yeah, a paper clip for sure. Yeah. And most I don't know what got into me. We don't staple anything. I did I put this in my script as a joke. Didn't know it would actually be relevant 7 years later the paper clips for staples argument. Yeah, at work we don't staple anything because you're always moving sheets yep. around. Uh You never know when you need to this morning, rearrange it or separate it. This morning my brain wasn't working and I I Took something from the printer and I walked over. I even looked at one of my coworkers and I just stared at her and I was like, what am I doing right now? I walked over the stapler, stapled it crookedly. And then I was like, don't know why I did that. Got to my desk and was looking for the stapler remover. And I, it was just, yeah, you know, sometimes you're dumb. <laughs> it's nice that we followed up on this topic though. So I can know officially, definitively, I was right. Maybe we should go with a new topic. Let's do this. How do you listen to podcasts when you listen to them? Normal speed? Do you do 1.5 times speed or do you do 2 times speed? Normal speed. I do normal speed too. I, I did learn though recently that kids these days, when they have like an assignment or something like that, they'll watch like YouTube videos and uh, like the lectures and, and things like that at like 2 times speed. And I'm just like, how the attention spans... For, for kids these days is insane. I can't even imagine growing up and having the power to do things at two times speed, you it's know? It's probably why their slang is all just blurred together words that make no sense because it just sounds like that when they're listening to things on two times speed. I'm going to go out on a limb and say anyone who listens to podcasts that were carefully crafted and created <laughs> at two times speed is an asshole. And they probably heard that at double speed just now. So let me say it again for them specifically you're an asshole because at two times speed that'll sound totally normal i'm just kidding that was really more of a shout out to garrett because he told me that he listens to, uh, to our podcast at two times speed and like every other podcast at two times speed so fuck you garrett what the um, frick anyways cake or pie uh, just kidding before you answer that let me cover my topic i'm gonna be covering <laughs> the united verde <laughs> hospital you're such a dick <laughs> This story takes place in Jerome, Arizona, in the 1920s. Well, it starts in the 1920s. Y'all remember the 1920s, right? Fascism was starting to take a foothold, again, in Germany, among other places in the world, and that would have dire results in the 1930s and 40s, and, you know, pretty much all time after that. The U.S. was doing great in the 1920s, referred to the decade as the Roaring Twenties. Why was it roaring? nothing could slow us down, because we were doing great. Lots of great music, people were dancing and shit, the economy was killing it, for the most part, and insulin was first used, I think in 1922, to treat diabetes, which would save millions of lives and ensure cheap access to life-saving medicine forever, right? <laughs> kind of. Not, uh, really. yeah. not lately, but not, in 1926, Jerome, Arizona was a boom town. Prospectors and miners were filling the town in search of that sweet, sweet metal, copper. Probably thought gold. Nope. Jerome was a copper town. Yes, that metal that thieves these days steal your window <laughs> AC unit for so that they can use it by selling it for like 20 or 30 fucking dollars. That was what they went to Jerome, Arizona to be mined out of the mines. Because that's what you do in mines. Uh, and that went well. Working conditions were barely humane. Miners were treated like indentured servants and worked to death. Uh, in some cases, quite literally. Uh, in the late 1910s, in fact, the miners exercised their right to collective bargaining and formed a union, uh, debating whether or not they would go on strike against the owner of the mine, a company known as United Verde. It popped up again. The name United Verde Hospital. Shocker. These are the fucking people who own the copper mines ah. in Jerome, Arizona. So okay. this is relevant. Okay. <laughs> United Verde was, of course, more than willing to come to the table and negotiate at the end of the 1910s. And they said, don't strike. Or we'll fuck you up. 
What? Fuck you right up. And that's not obviously a quote, but it's pretty much what they threatened to do. There was actually another miners union at the time who didn't like the one that was created in Jerome. And those guys held a vote whether or not they're going to strike. And their vote came back 470 to 194, massively in favor of not striking. So after that vote, three days later, 250 vigilantes in Jerome were hired or just decided on their own that they're going to round up a bunch of the miners who had voted to go on strike, totaling around 60. I've seen totals from between 60 and 75. They grabbed them. They drug them to a nearby railroad. They tossed them on a cattle car. And they told them, if you come back, we'll fucking kill you. And they literally left town on a rail. So some of the remaining miners who had voted to go on strike were then arrested and held in jail, but never charged with a crime, violating their civil liberties and all that fun stuff. Because that's just the sort of shit that happened back in the day when you tried to unionize and say, we'd like to be treated like human beings and not worked to death, literally. People still do that. To unions. People don't like... Do they? They murder unions this way nowadays? Yep. They take everyone and they just murder them all. Okay. I should look into that so I can find more about that. (laughs) There's actually I mean, people just don't like unions. There's a straight up horrifying topic that I could cover, which is just way too political, but it's about how the auto companies in uh, Michigan, they fought to unionize and they basically had to occupy the factories and the like big three, the companies that were making the automobiles, Uh they hired the police to like come and get them out they like straight up gave them money like get them out of our fucking factories we'll pay you whatever you want and obviously since you're cops anything you do is technically legal and uh, somehow they got word the people in the factories got word to the governor who sent the national guard who showed up and had to protect the citizens from the police it's a crazy fucking story we're not covering that one though we're covering united verde who won basically they're like you can't unionize here the other union that does exist voted not to strike so get the fuck out of town or we'll kill you Everything settled down, kind of. Things were still pretty horrible for them. And then several years later, in 1926, United Verde went out into the city of Jerome, looked around and said, you know how our miners are always getting injuries or dying a lot? I have an idea for that. And whoever this person was talking to said, is your idea to provide them with safer working conditions and better, more manageable hours to prevent exhaustion and continuous injury? To which the original speaker replied, ha, fuck no. Let's make a hospital. That way we can treat them there and we can get money from them when they get injured. That's uh, pretty fucked up. Cold blooded. Indeed. Smart business. Super fucked up. And that's what they did. And in January of 1927, the United Verde Hospital opened its doors. And for a structure that was built in 1926 and opened in January of 1927, it was a pretty forward thinking advanced building. It was made to be fireproof. There was no wood whatsoever in the in the entire structure. They were trying very hard to make it so that it couldn't catch fire. Now, we know other things can catch fire without wood, but they were trying very hard for this framework to be something that if there was a fire, it wouldn't burn to the ground, which is a pretty good investment, I'd say. Secondly, it was supposed to be earthquake proof. We all know back in the day in the early 1900s, you could use a word and call it proof, and that usually meant it was going to happen. Like, the unsinkable ship Ah. is the fucking Titanic. Yeah. Ship can't be sunk. Sink proof. Yep, it's at the bottom of the fucking ocean. It's going to be there forever. But this place was supposed to be earthquake proof. And they did that. They tried to have it be built to cancel out the rumblings of the ground and shaking as much as they could. Not just because of earthquakes, but because of the massive amounts of blasting from dynamite that happened on a nearly constant basis in this mining town. One of the things they also had was the first service elevator... In the history of Arizona. Was it like mechanical? Yeah. It was electric. Oh. Like they had electricity in this place and they had an elevator, which is still in use to this day. From the, what I can the tell. The actual elevator. From what I can tell. I can't guarantee it's like the same setup, but I know things have happened, but this building is still around. Let me get there. The first couple years of the United Verde Hospital being open, it was actually held in pretty high regard. It had modern, for the time, equipment, sterile rooms, which is something that not every hospital had back in the day. You know, the 1920s weren't exactly as gross as the 1800s, but <laughs> not every place was clean, basically, is the best I way I can put it. I just imagine dirty hands and bodies yeah. during surgeries. And this is out west in a boom town. You were not guaranteed to have a good hospital, let alone, like, a doctor who washed his hands. But this place was supposed to be about as cutting edge as the west had seen. The town's population would reach its peak shortly after the opening of the hospital, and quite a few individuals from Jerome would wind up at the hospital. Something happened. They just, you know, wind up going there. Yeah. That's where you need to go. 
And as we all know, when the 30s rolled around, things just got better for the United States. JK, LOL, October 29, 1929, <laughs> the stock market crashed on what was known as Black Thursday and fucked the country and its economy for about the next decade to 15 years or so. The Great Depression officially began, and the fancy new hospital in the boomtown in Arizona suddenly stopped being so fancy. They couldn't quite maintain what was going on because the price of copper, which was the primary thing that the United Verde Company traded in, plummeted when the Great Depression happened, which meant they didn't really have much money, so they weren't going to be able to keep it up to date. People kept coming in, conditions kept getting worse because they had less and less money, and things just sort of started going downhill. When that happened, the town began dying off, and its people weren't faring much better. The hospital had frequent visitors, and some of them checked in. And, and didn't never check checked out. out. To put it bluntly, a lot of folks died. Lots of them. This place was not somewhere you wanted to end up. And this is the best way I can put it. The town's population at its peak was in 1930. That was 4,932 people. Which is nothing. Yeah, according to the U.S. Census. By 1940, there was only 2,300 people. So in those 10 years, more than half left. By 1950, there was 1,233 people. So almost half left again. So keep the idea in mind. 5,000 people, right? 5,000 people was the population of this town at its peak. It's said between 1930 and 1950 that 9,000 people died in United Verity Hospital. How is that possible? Side note, the internet said this with no citable source, so it's 100% true <laughs> and cannot be doubted. It's not possible. But if you consider the town's population was about half that, that is fucking nuts. Like, to compare that, let's look at a random town today. And I picked Jacksonville, Florida for this comparison. Why? Because its population is almost exactly 1 million people. It's like 980,000 about. So imagine if today we said, let's start counting. And then in May of 2044, 2 million people had died in Jacksonville at one hospital. Obviously, this example doesn't scale. Either way, when you think about it and try and wrap your head around the fact that almost double the population died in one fucking hospital, then the entire population of the town, it's pretty fucking scary. It just seems like it's the center of death in this region, you know? It's where people go to die. Are they vampires? They all just get sent there. And they where get are you getting vampire sucked? from any of the things that I've talked about? <laughs> you think the hospital staff is vampires? Yeah. Everybody goes there to get healed, but really it's just like feeding grounds and they're just like, yum, 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 yum. Is that how vampires sound? Wouldn't it be cute if they did? If they sucked your blood and they sounded like that afterwards, I'd be like, ugh, god damn it. And then I'd die. I'd be like, ugh, it was so cute. <laughs> Or is it a place for scientific experiments where they're just taking all these bodies like a chop shop and just like doing things with them? And that's why so many people die. You got to stop watching B or C rated horror movies (laughs) on Amazon, Hulu and any other streaming service that you can get your hands on. (laughs) I mean, that's a lot of people. It's a fuck ton of people. And during that time, not everyone who died there did so of like standard hospital issues Uh, In 1935, a maintenance worker supposedly named Claude Harvey was found in the basement, apparently crushed by that super awesome elevator I was talking to you about earlier. And not long after, people started saying they could see him in the hospital still, in particular, inside the elevator that crushed him. When they investigated this, this is a death that apparently did happen. And when they investigated this, the elevator was still functional, meaning that it didn't malfunction and crush him. And it shouldn't have crushed him. So they said he either was murdered and tossed to the bottom of the elevator shaft and he was crushed by the elevator at some point, or he threw himself down the elevator shaft and that's how he died. Either way, case is still open, I guess, or they closed and they're like, dead is dead, moving forward. Imagine, right? You're this guy, you get crushed by this elevator and then your spirit rises up into the elevator itself and and you're you're just stuck there. You're just like, God damn it. I'd be like, this is the worst place to get stuck. But after that, things get creepy and they continue to deteriorate as the town shrank. And very, very soon afterwards, 1950, the hospital shuts its doors. It's technically only open for 24 years. And people probably just started dying at home because it was cheaper. That's all I can imagine that people are like, I'm not going to that fucking hospital. So every time someone goes there, they die. I'd rather just stay home. Claude got left alone in the elevator by himself for all eternity? No, he did not. And I'll get to that. We're going to keep going. The United Verde Copper Company was actually sold to Phelps Dodge. 
They shut their doors. Phelps Dodge came in and took everything over in 1935. So the company who made it had already folded. So even though it's called United Verde Hospital, that company no longer existed. And the name was just like kind of there for 15 years until they shuttered the doors. Uh, After the hospital was closed in 1950, uh, Phelps Dodge lasted three more years until they pulled out of Jerome entirely, shutting down the mines, which have not been reopened since then. So the town population dwindled to the point where I think for like the last four decades, it's held pretty close between 420 people and 500 people. What? So yeah, the town is basically a ghost town and there's still people that do live there. That's like no one. This building is still there and we're going to keep going because there's more to this story. This is a 30,000 square foot building that just suddenly becomes empty. And almost immediately when it's abandoned, townsfolk started saying it was haunted. And I'm sure there were whispers of it prior to being shut down that it was haunted. But once it was abandoned, the word on the streets became that you could hear the wailing of the dead coming from the building if you got close enough or dared to go inside. Okay, wailing of the dead or just wind blowing through a 30,000 square foot abandoned building? I mean, that's why you got to go in to check, I guess, right? People who would do that and go urban exploring, also known as trespassing, in the hospital would say you could hear wails and moans. And as a side note, I'd like to point out, when I say whales, I mean sad human noises and not like orca not whale noises. Not the fish in the ocean. Exactly. And as a side side note. Oh, I note, guess whales are mammals. Sorry. How fucking scary would it be to be in an abandoned hospital and just hear a fucking whale call? I'd shit myself. P- like, Please do a, do a sound of a whale. I'm going to add one in there. I'm not going to do it myself. What? I'm not going to do it. But like the idea of a whale making whale calls inside a haunted hospital should be a sci-fi movie that you would eventually watch on Hulu. <laughs> All I'm thinking of is Finding Nemo when she thinks she can speak whale. I have only seen the movie one time. Oh, sweet Jesus. Dory speaks I know Dory, whale. Yeah. And how she speaks whale is the all I'm imagining when you're saying imagine Oh, some wailing through a hospital calling for you. That's what I'm hearing. I hear very different things. I'm stuck (laughs) on this whole idea of you being in a haunted place and hearing an actual whale calling to you. I would call the movie Killer Whale. But the plot twist at the (laughs) end, it's not a killer whale. It's like a humpback whale or something fucking lame. Take that Star Trek 4. What? Anywho, (laughs) Star Trek 4 is... uh, not a good movie. I've never, I've never. Garrett's probably really pissed now. He's like slowing like down to old one time. Star Trek. Yeah. Okay. With Shatner and everything, they have to travel back in time to like 1986 because aliens show up and they're basically like, "We're gonna destroy Earth unless you can like give us the password." Turns out the password is a fucking humpback whale singing its song, like they were testing to see if we kept the oceans pure enough to prevent them from going extinct. I can't remember. I haven't seen that movie in 20 years. I just remember it was boring as fuck. It felt like fanfic. Like Captain Kirk and Spock walking around 1986, like trying to figure out how to swear at cab drivers. I'm moving forward. People that visited would hear all manner of creepy shit within the abandoned hospital. Eventually, whoever was in charge of the place, which is still Phelps Dodge, uh, decided they were going to hire security, private security, to keep people out because vandalism got so bad. Because this place still had uh, like equipment in there, like x-ray machines and gurneys and shit. Yeah. Until like 1973. The haunting shit you leave in a hospital. Yeah. you just like, yeah, people died on these things, so we're just going to leave them behind. Um, and people would just go in there. And it was in this massive state of disrepair. Things were getting vandalized. The building itself was getting vandalized. And it was growing more and more fucked up year after year. The security guard gets brought in to keep those snooping kids out. And he does a really good job of it. At least until 1980 when he hung himself in the engineer slash boiler room. Excuse me? I'll get to that a little bit later. But that's the story. After that, Phelps Dodge just decided to let the police handle security so they weren't going to hire private security. It's private property. They're not enforcing anything besides like signs that say you can't be here. So if police catch you there, you can have charges brought up against you. But that's about it. They're not like going to hire security. This is basically like no investment whatsoever from Phelps Dodge in this abandoned building. Okay. So it gets to 1994. This place has been abandoned for 44 years. And this guy named Larry Alther, which I think I'm saying his name right went to Phelps Dodge and said, quote, hey, that place looks like fucking shit. <laughs> and they okay. said, quote, word. No. And he went on to say, quote, sell it to me. And they said, quote, all right. I think the only realistic part of that conversation was him, you quoting him saying, sell it to me. Yeah. The whole thing is real. Uh. So they did. 
Brilliant negotiator, Larry, obviously. And I say that as a joke, but realistically, he took an empty, haunted building that was run down and vandalized and decided that he was going to make it less corpsey and turn it into a hotel. He said, let's turn this fucking place into a hotel. It's got the good bones of a hotel. Because it's a hospital already. Anti-earthquake. Built to have rooms the size that makes it fairly comfortable accommodations for people. Let's just go ahead and make this into a hotel. They did. They gave it a motto. Arizona's Mile High Historic Landmark. And they reopened the doors in 1996. Only took them two years to scrub 44 years of decay and around 60 years of death off those walls. They just need to put a colon after that landmark and say haunted hotel. I'm not. I'm shocked they actually haven't done that yet. When they reopened in 1996, they only had six rooms available to start. And upon booking their first guests, they immediately started hearing about the voices coming from parts of the hotel that were empty. Guests also complained about the sounds of wheels passing by outside the oh, room. Oh, God. Sounding like a hospital gurney being pushed down the hallway. That's horrifying. And they took out a journal and they started recording the complaints. It said that the journal they record complaints from guests in is 300 pages long. And they have six or seven of them filled. Oh, this my point. God. This place is still open to this day. Uh, I'm going to keep going because we have lots to cover from this place. They didn't just ignore the complaints, though. They weren't just like, yeah, it's a haunted hotel. We'll market it. No, they're like, if people are hearing stuff outside their room, we should make updates or improvements because maybe it's actually something. Did they exercise the demons? They replaced the carpets because they're like, maybe someone was pushing something outside their room and that's what they heard or someone was walking by and they assumed it sounded like like gurney wheels because they know the reputation of the place. So they made carpets. They put in carpets, excuse me, that were supposed to be very quiet to prevent the noise. And it didn't dissipate this at all. All it really did was confirm that the noise you were hearing wasn't coming from footsteps or things moving past. They don't know where it comes from. But, like, the guy who owns the hotel confirmed those were some of the first things they heard from guests. He hears it all the time still to this day. What? The noises can still be heard. They say it's loudest at 3 a.m. And it's one of the most common noises okay. all over when the any- hotel. When anybody says it's loudest at 3 a.m., I think that's a cop out. I think that's just like, we're trying to sell our haunted story here. So it's 3 a.m. You may be right. Uh, that's also according to Larry, the guy who owns and operates the place. Guests started complaining on the third floor of wild animals, stating that they were seeing in particular cats in their rooms. They investigated it to figure out where the cats were coming from and couldn't find any place cats were coming from, anywhere cats lived, or any cats. And then guests started saying that these cats they were seeing in their room would enter while the room was completely closed. Shut the front door. Jump up on the bed, walk around, and then just fucking disappear. That's pretty scary. They're said to have ghost cats in this hotel. Who doesn't want ghost cats? I mean, I don't. Because cats can be dickheads sometimes. And if I can't do something to scare them off and they're ghosts, it's basically like they're undefeatable. And that's kind of scary. I mean, I know our cat can be a dickhead. Yeah. Imagine if she was a ghost and there's nothing you could do. (laughs) It's not just the cats, though. Folks started saying that they could see human-shaped figures wandering around the halls and staircases. They would evaporate, basically, when they try to, like, focus in on them or look at them directly. The guests do have plenty of stories. The employees have even more. The current GM, as of, I think, 2016, the article I read from her, and multiple other folks who work there stated that they've heard the sounds of trauma, as if you're in a hospital that has something horrible happening to someone somewhere Like alarms somewhere going in off or something? Person being operated on or wailing because they're going oh. through trauma. Uh, they smelled odd things, like the smells of a hospital that apparently had no apparent source, and they could hear children laughing when children were not present. No, no, no. Which is always the most That's, haunting thing. Yes. Disembodied children's laughter. Big no for me. Yeah. I figured you'd love that part. I, I don't have anything about the basement, but I, the boiler room <laughs> hanging is about as close as I could get. Well, is the, okay, yeah, the boiler room has to be the basement, right? I mean, I'm sure there's a sub-level that has a lot of stuff there, but they have individual rooms. It was a hospital, so I guarantee you the morgue's down there, it's too. It's where they murdered Freddy Krueger. The boiler room is where he inhabits, and in, I think he got murdered in a shack in both <laughs> versions. Don't make me check. Um, <laughs> what is interesting is, like, any good haunted hotel... There is one room in particular that has the most activity. It's said to be room number 32, which I assume is on the third floor um, because the number three indicates that it's probably on the third floor. (laughs) Uh, It receives the most reports of paranormal sightings, apparitions showing up in the room, cold spots, the room itself just being unnecessarily cold, disembodied voices. It's also said to be the room that has had the most tragedy. 
Now, okay. This is unconfirmed, but there has supposedly been two separate suicides in this room. Wow. One was a former miner who was without the use of his legs and bound to a wheelchair for mobility. He booked the room. He then went into it, went out onto the balcony, pulled himself up on the railing, and threw himself over, uh, falling to his death. That's depressing. The other was supposedly a businessman who I think booked the room after the first one uh, and shot himself inside the room. People that have been in this room, do they say, like, you get bad vibes? Or? Yeah. The whole third floor is apparently nothing but bad vibes. Okay. And I have a story at the end that'll that'll kind of cover that. Um, I do want to state, because I'm usually the skeptic one and I want to toss some stuff in here. I did try and confirm some stuff. So I had some questions from both of those stories. Because they're supposedly taking place when this place is a hotel, which opened in 1996. There should be records of this I was 11 years old. There's records all over the place of stuff that happened since I was fucking 11. So one question I had is, why would a miner still be there when the mines closed a long time ago? Like 1953. Fair. This is 43 years after that. It's a ghost miner. I was like, was the miner very old and decided he wanted to go into this place and this is where he would die? Ah. My second question was, where are the police reports and obits? Can't find anything. I looked for obits and police reports, newspaper articles about these suicides. Couldn't find them. In fact, the only thing I could find was an obituary. And it was for the caretaker who supposedly hung himself in the boiler room or the security guard, whatever. Um, That was supposed to have happened in 1980. He had a name. I decided not to include it because I was like, this sounds like bullshit. There were two obits for that exact same name. One came from a guy who died in 1944. He sounds like he was connected to the town before relocating to the East Coast where he died of natural causes. Okay. I think his son wound up being there. He wound up dying in 1982 with the same name. He did die in Jerome, Arizona. I found the newspaper article that shows the obit stating that he died in his home. He didn't kill himself. And if he did, he did it in his home, not in the boiler room. So dates are off, location of death is off, nothing mentioned about suicide in the obit, but that, you know, doesn't always necessarily make the obit, obviously. Yeah. So a lot of things not matching up to the stories. I think in a lot of cases, places have these rumors spread about them that become part of their legend or lore, where someone who might have worked there at some point, or someone who was just in the town, passed away in 1982, and by the time it was like, you know, 2000 People were talking about this guy who hung himself in the hotel, yeah. who was a person that lived in town. So people could be like, yes, he lived here. Yes, he died here. And that's enough. Like, it feels like it's confirmed to anyone who doesn't want to dig deeper, who, you know, wants to believe, to quote the poster hanging on our believe. wall right now. It's hard to say what's true and what's not. That said, I'll give you a couple of stories from folks who have been here. So I went on TripAdvisor and I found a story from someone who stayed there for New Year's in 2013 in room 35, not 32. They stated room 35 was a hot spot for activity. They stated the place was very clean. The rooms were small, but overall it was nice. They stated that in the middle of the night, they were seeing streams of light randomly coming through their window while they were trying to sleep. When they would open the blinds, the, basically the room they were in, the window was just looking out on the mountain behind the hotel. There was no light source whatsoever, and they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Okay. It was weirding them out. They eventually wound up going to sleep. And the husband claimed he was awoken by something tapping him on the arm. No, no, no. They stated in the review, this room is haunted by a little boy who identified himself as Daniel. And when asking around about this, they state they were told that this is a common ghost of a eight-year-old boy uh, who I guess maybe died in the room, died in the hotel. Um, But, I mean, the thing, the whole review was very long and it basically was just like endorsing the fact that this ghost inhabits room 35. Okay. It literally says, like, 35 is the one with the little boy, which sounded really creepy until I read the full thing. Uh, there are some stories around the internet from folks who have stayed there on Reddit as well. One as recent as 2020, so during the COVID times. Uh, the guest <laughs> said their room didn't have any activity. They are staying on the second floor. But around 1 a.m., they decided they're going to take their friend and a camera and go to the third floor, which was not being used. Only the second and the fourth floor were being used at this time. The third floor, no one was staying on. They said as soon as they got to the third floor, it was cold and it had really creepy, really bad vibes in general. Oh, wow. And they started walking around. He was taking pictures, trying to get orbs or something along those lines. Uh, He couldn't get it, but he started to hear disembodied whispers. And he asked his friend, are you trying to say something to me because I can't hear you? And the friend's like, I haven't said a word. And he was like, that's super creepy. 
And then they were walking around a little bit more and they could hear crying coming from a specific part, like far down the hallway of the third floor. And they just decided like, fuck it, we're leaving. Something got them spooked enough where they're like, this sucks. When they got to the second floor again, they felt better. They went to their room. They slept fine. The room didn't feel haunted. They didn't have anything happen in their room. In the morning, they asked someone like, hey, what was this part of the third floor when it was a hospital? And they were told it used to be the maternity ward. Which explains the the crying. And they were told that in a lot of cases, people hear either the sound of a woman crying or sometimes the sound of a baby crying. And either way, that's horrifying. This topic has me tripping because that's... I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I just... Oh, my gosh. It's It's very haunting, like the definition of it, so... Either way, sound of a woman crying, babies crying. This place is said to live up to its reputation of being the most haunted hotel Does in it? Arizona. Does it, though? And that, my spooky friends, is the Jerome Grand Hotel as it is known now. And from what I read online, I didn't actually check. You can book a room for around 200 bucks a night. Nice. So... Um, I hate when people say that they're the most haunted hotel or most haunted this, most haunted that, anywhere. A lot of the stuff I found said it was the most haunted place in Arizona. I think they can safely claim most haunted hotel in Arizona because I haven't really seen any other ones. So if, right right now, I mean, I only know of one and it seems like it's the most haunted. <laughs> so go ahead. Take that title. I don't mind. But if you really want to investigate it, we can go stay there 200 bucks a night. Just no. saying Arizona's not that far. No, no. Unless they invite us to come for free. That'd be cool. I'd totally go. I'd love to see it. But yeah, that is uh, the Jerome Grand Hotel. So I hope you, you enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Haunted topics are just things that I find incredibly fun and interesting. Um, I feel like most of the time these days we're doing true crime or or things that actually happen. Not that haunted things don't actually happen. Um, we just can't confirm a lot of the stuff that we tell us topics that are haunting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can confirm a hurricane hit, you know? Natural disasters <laughs> are super easy to confirm. There's a lot more data on those things than there are for these haunted locations. And and there are so many different haunted places that we have yet to cover because there's just not a lot on them. Um, I wish there were more. Maybe... In the future, when we're gone, there'd be like, remember that building <laughs> from this time in 2000? Yeah, that place is hella haunted. When we're gone. Oh, um, that'd be so cryptic. Uh, what's actually inspired me to do this topic, I forgot to mention this, is that my old boss, when I worked at Credit One, texted me. It was a super long wall of text. And I was just like, oh, man, I wonder what happened. And she told me they went to Lake Tahoe for some tournament for her kid, I think. And, like, there was another kid there. I'm not. I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember exactly what the text said, but essentially uh, it was her friends and her friends' kids staying in a different hotel, and their kid is like super chill, super brave, like never really scared about anything, and he could not sleep because he was so scared of the room they were in. Really? And he said he could see like a little girl in the room <gasps> the staring at them door. while they slept. Shut the front door. And the other kid was freaking out about it too. And after like two or three nights, they literally hadn't slept, and so they invited. Uh, my old boss invited her friend and their kids over. They basically had like a big slumber party and they all stayed in their room and like the kids were all really happy and then they just knocked the fuck out because they were so tired because they had barely slept. Wow. And so they asked around like, hey, do you guys know anything about this specific hotel? And people were like, oh yeah, it's haunted as fuck. <laughs> and they basically were just told like that hotel that the other people were staying at, super haunted. Don't stay there. And she was like, so if you ever cover this hotel in like the south of Lake Tahoe, like let me know. And uh, I was just like, oh, I'll Google it a little bit. And I Googled the name of it and didn't pop anything. And I Googled the name of the hotel and like haunted and a few things popped up. So I was like, be cool to cover it. But I kind of want to fucking call them. Like I just had the urge like. The hotel? Yeah. Just to call them like, hey, like I'm calling. I have a podcast. Just wondering if you'd like to do any official comments uh, because I see some stuff online. And I heard someone who had stayed there specifically had an experience just to see what they would say. And I was like debating. I was like, go with a hotel. That's not this one first. And then maybe do that later when I'm feeling like a little more up to it. And it's not like already, you know. Wow. Night, look so. at you. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens with that one. But yeah, I thought this one was pretty good. So there you go. Nice. On the hotel for the night. I liked it. Good solid topic. Good solid topic. I liked it. 
So yeah, that's everything we have for episode 293 of Scarish. If you have a story, it doesn't necessarily have to be about a haunted hotel stay or a but haunted hospital. But if you hospital. know about any, let us know. Absolutely. Could be about anything. Supernatural, spiritual, coincidental. Maybe something happened that you thought was scary and it turns out it was just like random happenstance and you felt silly afterwards. Those ones are always fun. If you guys are curious what we're talking about, go and listen to some of our story times. Those are all homegrown horrors shared to us, with us, um, by our spooky fam. Yeah, by you folks that reach out. We've had extraterrestrial ones, true crime ones. They're all super entertaining. And if you want to send us a story like that, please email storytime at scarish.com or go to our website, scarish.com. Click on contact us, fill out that form. It comes directly to us or hit us up on our social medias. Facebook is facebook.com slash scarish podcast. Twitter is at scarish pod and Instagram is at scarish podcast. Robin, for folks who would like to donate to us, how can they do so? You can go to patreon.com slash scarish podcast. Those are monthly donations with tiers starting at a dollar. Um, at a dollar, you get ad-free episodes, so that's always cool. Ad-free is the way to be. Uh, and just so everybody knows, we do have a Teespring store. It's where our merch is. And, uh, uh I mean, a, a bunch of our merch is like t-shirts, hoodies, things like that. I just put out like three new designs. So if you guys want to go over to our Teespring store, the link is on our website, I believe. Um, so you guys can do that. Check out the new designs, uh, new ghosts, new cryptid, uh, things like that. So yeah, it's cool. Fun time. So thank you to everyone who supports us by listening, donating, all the stuff, just sharing it, talking about it. It means the world to us that anyone really listens to us. And yeah. it's still kind of like flabbergasting that people support us in the the way you do. And Consider it means me everything. gobsmacked. So indeed, smack that gob. So <laughs> <laughs> that's everything we have for episode 293. <laughs> so Robin, sign us out. Why you got to make it weird like that? Smack that gob didn't sound that weird in my head. I just rearranged the word. Sign us out. Keep on creeping on and we'll talk to you guys later. Uh, bye bye.